Oh, thank you, Dexter, Kaylee screamed as I handed her the keys to her brand new Mercedes. Now, I know what you must be thinking. Getting your crush a car is a bit overboard, but if it meant getting her to like me, then I was more than willing to do it. Hi, my name is Dexter. Like and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell too so you will see all of our videos. I met Kaylee when her father, Mr. Clark, at one of our conference meetings said that he wanted Kaylee to get to know the ropes of the company. Kaylee had a reputation for always being in the spotlight with new boyfriends and every weekend she was in a different country. Mr. Clark knew that if she continued her shenanigans, it would reflect badly on his company. Mr. Hall, Mr. Clark said looking directly at me, Kaylee will be working as the head of accounts department, so you will now answer directly to her. Kaylee wasn't a basic woman. She had the body of a model. She was always in the latest fashion. She drove the latest car and her hair and nails were always done. I knew that I wanted to be with her ever since I laid eyes on her, but I knew that she would never date a man like me. I drove the same car that I did in college. My salary wasn't anything to be excited about, and my wardrobe was filled with worn out suits and shoes. And well, my glasses were a whole other story. I knew if I ever wanted a shot with Kaylee that I needed to step up my game. After work, I went to the mall and got myself contacts and a whole new wardrobe. I even traded in my old car and got myself a new one. My parents always encouraged me to save and since I was not in the dating pool, I was able to save quite a lot over the years. The next day, my coworkers definitely noticed and I got a few notes on my desk from female coworkers, which included their numbers. But my eyes were only for Kaylee. I already imagined Kaylee being swept off her feet by my charming demeanor and relaxing in each other's arms watching Netflix on the weekends. With Kaylee's birthday right around the corner, I knew that purchasing the right gift would give me that foot in the door that I desperately needed. The next few days, Kaylee spoke to me at least twice, and it was a start since she had never looked in my direction before. I guess the makeover was working. The week leading up to Kaylee's birthday, I sent her flowers and wine with a note every day telling her to enjoy her day. On the eighth day, I mustered up all the courage I had and knocked on the door to her office. Hi, Miss Clark, can I have a word with you? I asked nervously. Hi, Dexter, come in and please call me Kaylee, she smiled. Did you like the wine and flowers that I sent? I did, thank you. It didn't have a name, so I didn't know who to thank. That was very thoughtful of you. I cleared my throat. <clears throat> Would you like to go on a date with me tonight? Oh, um... Actually, my father and I have a dinner date tonight, but maybe another time. I nodded and left the office, heartbroken. The rest of the day, I pondered on a gift that would make her say yes for the next time I planned to ask her on a date. By the end of the day, I knew what I was going to get Kaylee, and this time, she couldn't say no. I worked late that evening, and as I was leaving the office that day, I overheard Kaylee and Mr. Clark having an argument in her office. Dad, the numbers are not adding up, Kaylee said. Listen, I brought you into the company to balance the books, Mr. Clark said. Where am I supposed to pull numbers from, the air? What are you hiding, Dad? You need to come clean, Kaylee said, putting her hands on her hips. I slid into one of the cubicles close by and ducked under the desk when I saw Mr. Clark walk towards the door. I heard the door click, so I knew he pushed it in. I snuck out of the office, not giving much thought to what had just transpired. My only thoughts were to win Kaylee over. I emptied my savings and purchased her gift, which I presented to her on her birthday. I knocked on her door and entered. Good morning, Kaylee. Happy birthday, I said as I walked in with a cupcake and a candle. Kaylee laughed. Why, thank you, Dexter. Go ahead, make a wish. I watched as Kaylee closed her eyes and blew out the candle. I have something else for you, but it's outside, I said as I placed the cupcake on her desk. Why is it outside? Trust me, you will love it. Just follow me, I smiled at her. Without another word, Kaylee followed me out of the building. There was a black Mercedes with a red bow around it. That is for you, I said as I pointed to the car. Oh, thank you, Dexter, Kaylee screamed as I handed her the keys to her brand new Mercedes. I made reservations for us tonight. Shall I pick you up at 7 p.m.? She looked at me, puzzled. I'm sorry, but I already have plans for tonight. I was even more heartbroken. How could she have refused my offer even after I had bought her a car? I watched as she hopped into the car and drove away. I decided to go to the restaurant anyway since I already paid for the reservation. My cousin, who worked at the restaurant, helped me get the reservation since getting reservations on short notice were impossible to come by. During dinner, I saw Kaylee walk in with Michael McGuire, who was our company's biggest rival. My father always said when an opportunity presents itself that you should make the most of it, so that's what I did. 
If Kaylee didn't want to go on a date with me willingly, then maybe she just needed the right incentive. I knew that once she went on a date with me, that she would see what a great guy I was. I took out my phone and snapped a few photos and videos of Michael and Kaylee. After dinner, I left and I couldn't wait to get to the office the next day. As soon as I saw Kaylee walk into her office the next day, I followed her. This time, I didn't even knock. I just walked in like I owned the office. Dexter, can I help you? Kaylee asked, looking at me somewhat annoyed by my intrusion. I would like to take you on a date tonight and before you say no, let me show you something that will help with your response, I said as I passed Kaylee my phone. I watched as fear filled her eyes. I continued, now before you try to smash my phone, I've already emailed this to myself and I have a few copies. And while well, there are the cameras in the office, I said pointing to the camera in the corner of her office, you wouldn't want daddy wondering why you're smashing an employee's phone now, do you? Where do you want to have this date? She asked coldly. I told her to meet me at the same restaurant from the night before since I already gave my cousin the heads up that I would need seating for two. She agreed to meet me there and I reminded her that if she didn't, I would sell the videos and pictures to the highest buyer. I waited 30 minutes before Kaylee showed up and when she did, she showed up with a briefcase. She sat down and looked me square in the eyes. You may think that your little tactic at the office was funny. This briefcase is for you. It contains $100,000. If you ever contact me or come close to me again, you will regret it, she snarled. Then she got up and walked out of the restaurant. As I drove home with the briefcase on the passenger seat, I was happy that I got back the money that I spent on Kaylee. I had just gotten out of the shower when I heard knocking on my front door. It was the police. When I opened the door, Detective Sanchez, as he introduced himself, ordered his men to search my apartment. He showed me statements where I took sums of money from the company's account all of which added up to $100,000. We almost didn't catch on because the sums were so small, but we got an anonymous call yesterday that helped to clear everything up, Detective Sanchez said. I have no idea what you're talking about, I fumbled as I looked through the statements. Just then, one of the police officers brought out the briefcase. Take a look at this, Detective, the officer said as he opened the briefcase. So you don't know anything about this either, Detective Sanchez asked. I got that money from Kaylee Clark yesterday. Take him away, boys. Let's wrap it up here. That night, my life changed drastically. Over the next few months, my name and face was plastered in the newspapers. I lost my job, had to move back in with my parents because I couldn't afford to pay rent and pay lawyer fees with the rest of my savings. I also had to pay my own bail because my parents refused to help me financially. They said that I got myself into this mess and I needed to get myself out. They also said that I was lucky that they even opened their doors for me. I knew that Kaylee was the one behind my demise, and if she thought I was about to let her ruin my life, boy, was she wrong. A few nights a week, I went to Kaylee's place with a camera to see if I could even the score. There was a large tree overlooking her house that easily concealed me at night. I finally got my big break when Michael showed up at Kaylee's place. I took pictures and video evidence. Next, I called my cousin and asked if he could get the footage from the restaurant the night Kaylee met me at the restaurant. It took my cousin a few days, but he got the footage for me. I decided that desperate times called for desperate measures. I made contact with Mr. Clark and I told him everything and I sent the videos and the pictures to him as requested. I want all charges dropped or I will be going to the press about this information and the fact that your daughter is trying to blackmail me. I don't think that is the image that you would like for your company, is it Mr. Clark? Mr. Clark agreed and he said he would get in contact with me when all the charges had been dropped. A few days later, I had a few job interviews and when I got to my parents' house, my father refused to open the door for me. Come on, dad, I pleaded. Open the door. What's this about? You are no longer welcome here, he said as I heard the door lock. I sat on the porch for hours wondering why the change of heart from my parents. A few hours later, I heard the door unlock and my mother walked out with a bag of food. Did you do it? She asked, looking into my eyes, searching for the truth. Do what, mom? My mom handed me her phone. There's a video in there that you need to see. I'm sorry, Dexter. She kissed me on the cheek and I could see her eyes beginning to fill with tears. She went back inside and I heard her lock the door behind her. I sat on the porch and looked through the phone and found the video that my mother was talking about. I gasped. The video showed a man wrapping a body in a rug. When the man looked into the security camera, it was me. I passed my hand through my hair. Someone was framing me. This is not happening, this is not happening, I repeated to myself. The other video on the phone was a news clip. The reporter said, 
Word just in that Kaylee Clark has been murdered. The suspect is Dexter Hall. We are told that Dexter Hall is armed and dangerous. Mr. Clark was on the news and was being interviewed too. I got a call from Mr. Hall who accused my Kaylee of bribing him. If you recall about two weeks ago, Mr. Hall was fired because he was embezzling money from the company. It was easy for him to hide it since he worked in the accounting department. He thinks that Kaylee is responsible for him getting fired. Now, my baby girl is gone. Mr. Clark broke down into tears and the video cut off. What the? I was at a loss for words. I heard sirens blaring in the distance and I knew I had to get as far away from my parents' house as possible. I've been on the run for three years now. I'm not recognized because I'm now homeless and my hair and my beard grew out. I wish I could go back in time to the day I met Kaylee. I would have stayed at home and counted rice one by one.